Well, hello, neighbor Kate. Hi, neighbor. Yeah. And uh, you know which chapter we're looking at today? Romans 10. We have been plodding through Romans. We're getting there. Yes, okay? we have. And we don't have all of our words up, but I got a couple words here. And today, today I'm going to nail you, kid. All right. Okay. All right. Romans 10. And uh, we're in the middle of an argument that Paul is in, he's having. I think he's kind of having it with himself. Is what about his ancestors in the faith, the Israelites? We would call them the Jewish people. I, just because they may not quite understand Jesus as the Messiah, are they going to be part of this whole thing? But we're going to take we're going to take this argument a little further in chapter ten, because uh, Paul starts off, and uh, he's actually pretty concerned about them. Why don't you go ahead and read one one through three? Okay. And you've got the New International Version. Yes, I yep. do. Brothers, my heart desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are, are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they, can, since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God, and start to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Okay, so here he's talking about, he's talking specifically about the Israelites who are zealous for having some righteousness from God, but they missed something. Um, I don't think, I don't think it's fair for us just to narrow it down to uh, one religious group, because I bet there's a whole bunch of people that could be trying to find their spiritual journey and they may get it wrong. You I know? think so. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people who uh, are zealous about their religious life, but they, they keep missing something, at least missing something from Paul's perspective, because read verse 4. What does Paul say is the center of all this? Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. There's our word, okay? Is it just for religious people that Christ died? No, it's for everyone. Everyone, including, uh, would you include the... Uh, non-religious yes would you can include the agnostics the ones yes. who don't know how about the atheists even those who yes. say there is no God Christ died for them too I uh, even died for some people that we may be we may be uncomfortable with now in the next section Paul uh, yeah Paul goes on and he says Moses is, has even written about this he says that uh, the righteousness is by faith so don't say that I'm going to ascend to heaven. I'm going to climb on my spiritual journey. I'm going to bring God down until finally I have righteousness because you just won't be able to do it. No. And then Paul says, and uh, Moses, he quotes Moses again, you, don't, you can't go down into the pits of hell thinking somehow I'm going, to, I'm going to somehow be able to pave my way through that and bring Christ back for me because... You can't do it. No, we, we don't have that power. No, we don't. And in fact, uh, we've, uh, we've learned uh, earlier in Romans that everybody has something of this sin inside of themselves, yes. something of this emptiness inside themselves. Because, uh, let's see, did it say some have sinned? All have sinned. All have sinned. Boy, we keep getting that all and everyone. Yes. Everybody's in the same boat. So finally, everybody has to come to the same conclusion, and that is uh, that is that at some point you have to say something in verse nine. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and bingo. <laughs> what do you say? Jesus is Lord. And another translation puts it: Jesus is the master. He is my master. You know, until you confess with this. And uh, in fact, I like the way the message goes on to talk about it. And it says, that's all the work is. It's just being able to get that confession. Uh, Jesus is the one. I, he's, he's it. Um, that anything, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Hmm. Well, let's see. Verse 13, what does it say? There's our word again. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Now this is the part that Paul is dealing with a religious, very religious group of people. They feel they've got a corner on the market of what, how God works just through their covenant. And Paul is saying, 
hey, don't think this is just for you. Like we heard in the last chapter, God's desire is to reach out to the whole world. But then Paul goes on to say something else, just a little bit different, in verse 14. And I'd like for you to read 14 and 15. Okay. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Okay, all right. Hey, put your feet up on the table, Kate. Yeah, how beautiful are those lovely... <laughs> what, what color is that? It's not pink. pink. Is it just pink, pink shoes? How beautiful are the feet? Because we know what you are... You, you have an ambition. You've stated an ambition that you'd like to be a preacher. Yes. And that's what Paul is talking about. That God needs some people to do what? Preach. Preach to whom? Well, let's see. Everyone. Okay, does that include people who, uh, people who are religious? Yes. And I got news for you, Kate. Someday may come when you've got a nice religious group of people in a box called a church, you know. But uh, are there some other people that you could think of that God would want you to be able to go out and speak to? Yes. Like whom? Those who may disagree. So you're supposed to proclaim that good news, you know, to those who disagree. Uh, I've got news for you. I've preached, I've preached in places like a jail where there's people that think, man, I'm just never going to, I'm never going to earn this, uh, earn this salvation from God. My life is a train wreck, is what they would say. And uh, I have to tell them, you remember what's on the other side of the word, preacher? It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. And then they say, well, I don't deserve the free gift. And you say, That's you're grace. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we None don't. of us do. None of us deserve the free gift. You're going to find yourself talking to people who feel like they've done things so bad that they're an enemy to God. What will you tell them? They're a friend. And by their own work? No. Okay. By that, God's grace. By God's grace, he has reconciled them, okay? So you got to go to preacher school to learn all these big words. The words, and not so that you can one-up people, but so that you can woo people, you know, to hear that word. Because God needs speakers. Kate, that's not just for you. No, it I isn't. I think that's for everybody who's listening, you know. Can we meet up with people who say... I got it all already, and you can say, no, God has it for you. Or can you meet up with people who say, I don't deserve. What do you have to do with people who can't understand or be able to comprehend all of the language? What do you get to do? You have to help them. Yeah, you still have to find a way of being able to speak that language. So here's Paul. Uh, saying something that may be used uh, at the day that you are ordained. Ordained doesn't mean that uh, doesn't mean that you're more special than others, but it means you've got a special function um, to help others be able to proclaim that word. And in fact, Paul goes on and he says um, uh, <clears throat> that. Uh, how long has God been? Uh, how long has God been doing this proclaiming? Verse eighteen. Forever. Well, go ahead and read it. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice had gone out into all the earth. Their uh -huh. their words to the end of the world. I asked the wrong question. I said, uh, how long has God been sending preachers? This actually answers, how far has God sent his preachers? Everywhere. Everywhere, to the end of the, to the, end of the world. Now, at the same time, Paul recognizes in the last three verses here, there's gonna be people that are envious that somehow this just doesn't come, this doesn't come the same way. I've got news for you as you get into ministry you're going to find people that are going to say, you know, I'm not sure 
I'm not sure I believe the way, you know, the way Kate is preaching. I'm not sure that I believe that way. That shouldn't stop you no. from continuing to preach this same good news that God wants to reconcile this world to himself. So I can say, bless you neighbor as you get into that preaching. Okay? Okay. Maybe we should pass it on too. I think we should. Yeah. And see you later neighbor. See you later neighbor.